from the cool, crisp confines of cold storage, it's live with Captain Jackhammer. Tonight's guest, Mike Johnson, creator of the Machinima Blockbuster pregame lobby. Featuring the aspect of Zan, here's your host, Captain Jackhammer. Hello, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, and welcome to this first episode of Live with Captain Jackhammer. As always, I am your host, Captain Jackhammer, and I thank you all for joining us. Yeah, and look at this set. Isn't it amazing, Mancubal? Blown away indeed. Oh, yeah. Pan the camera over here. Everybody, this is our announcer, Mancubal R. Wallaby. Let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Fellow Guard member TG Gigafux made this and all the sets for the show. I was just expecting a crate and a floating door on Foundry, but when I seen this, I was blown away. Well, we have got a big show for you tonight. Yes. Um, we have with us the creator of what some say is the most popular machinima out there today. Let's give it up for Mike Johnson, a.k.a. Harabek. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Mike. I know pregame lobby keeps you really busy, so I appreciate you giving us some time. No, no, it's no problem at all. I mean, to be honest, whenever I say I'm busy, I'm actually just looking at lawcats.com. So I'm really glad to be on your show. Wow, pregame lobby. Did you ever think that it was going to be so huge? No, actually, I never thought PGL would be this big. When I first uploaded the pilot, I was really happy to see 20 views, let alone build a fan base on it. You know, I'm really happy that people actually watch the show and they enjoy it. And some people that really love the show actually take the time out of their busy schedules and they uh, write me extensive hate mail about it, you know. I I'm really touched that they spend their time doing that. How did you ever come up with such an original idea? You know, there are a lot of different stories. There are times where I actually stood in standoff with uh, Wargasm, Pitch Black, and Pollo Diablo. Um, just talking about the crazy things that happen in the lobby and in matchmaking. Uh, just throwing out crazy uh, stories, written stories, ideas for a machinima. Uh, other times, my friends will be sitting there staring at me, watching me play, talking to the people on Xbox Live. And I think, um, you know, as a combination of all those things, it really became obvious that there should be a show about, you know, actual people playing Halo you know, and actually having those two different storylines intermix with each other. I think every time I go on Xbox Live, there is always a, a retrospect story where I go online and, you know, someone's like, oh my god, have you heard, or did you know about this? You won't believe that this happened, you know, and these are all these, all these stories that happen off Xbox Live, um, but they make the Xbox Live experience that much better. You know, you're sitting around on Valhalla trying to snipe some guy, and you can't concentrate because you're laughing about you know, a story about someone puking all over the place or something crazy happening in someone else's life. <laughs> so, would you say that that's your most memorable experience on Xbox Live, or is there another one that stands out in your mind? I think one of the best experiences I've had on Xbox Live is uh, I was talking to a guy named No Mercy, and uh, we were just talking about relationships, and, you know, all of a sudden we were sitting there playing matchmaking on a uh, blackout, and, uh, you know, he it got really quiet, and all of a sudden he turned to me and he says, "You know what you gotta do? You gotta sing Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls." And I just started laughing, and he started singing the song, and all these people overheard us, and they he started singing the song, and they joined in. Pretty soon, the entire lobby was singing this song, and uh, you can see that in the actual episode. Um, and that's just that's basically where I get a lot of the inspiration, just messing around on Xbox Live with crazy people. Have you ever attempted anything this big or something of this scope before? I honestly never really attempted anything this big. I started out doing little PSAs for my own community. Um, tried doing recruitment videos. They didn't really turn out that well. I started with music videos. Uh, looking, looking back at those, they are pretty bad. I never expected that anyone other than the people I actually knew personally uh, that I played with on Xbox Live would actually understand and laugh at the jokes that would come up. I, uh, I wasn't really sure if anyone had a friend like LOL Matt who was just annoying, you know, had a high-pitched voice, kept on talking, never shut up, and 
or if they were friends with someone like Brandon, you know, who's always a jerk, you know, is really cynical and, you know, calls stuff out all the time. Did you have a predetermined story arc plan when you started, or did it develop as the series progressed? I originally started with a storyline, and uh, for the most part, I stuck with it. Dealing with uh, the character Commander Melander is planned to have a larger story arc, and he will continue to be Mike's rival throughout the series. Uh, there's going to be a huge climactic ending between Mike and Commander Melander, or there might be an anticlimactic ending, kind of, you know, pissing people off. I'm not really sure. I'm still deciding it. Um... It's funny because the character Cell Sniper, on the other hand, he was not supposed to be in the storyline at all. I didn't have any any uh, pre-planned uh, arc for him. Um, I just had him in the first script. I had him as Random Blue Number Three, and the guy who plays him, the guy who does the voice acting for him, Austin Tizant, Tizant, whatever his name is, I hate him so much. Um, you know, he did such a great job doing it uh, with a country accent. You know that I I I just loved it, and the people I showed it to, they said like, you got to have that guy on, you got to have him as a character because he just everything he says is funny, just just by his accent, he makes everything perfect. Um, so Austin did such a great job that I actually made a character just for that, and I think it really works out well because it offsets Rachel's character, who's more of independent. She kind of takes charge. She's kind of the polar opposite um, of of uh, Mike. You know, and, you know, with stealth coming along, being a bigot and uh, sexist, you know, it really plays to her character really well. One of the burning questions on every pregame lobby fan is, is Rachel hot? But what I want to know is Jessica hot. I mean, I have a thing for English women. It must be the accent. I mean, she sounds so hot. I would love to put my Big Ben in her Buckingham Palace. You know what I'm saying? Wait. Aren't you married? Uh, we can edit that out, right? Um, it's live with Captain Jackhammer. Not taped so I can edit things out whenever I put my foot in my damn full mouth with Captain Jackhammer. Damn it! Ha ha! Busted! Jesus, you don't have to be such a dick about it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really funny that you ask that because a lot of people ask if Rachel and Jessica are both hot. Um, both Tuesday and Rebecca, they're great voice actresses, and I can see what you mean by having to think for Jessica. I get a lot of emails about her accent. Um, personally, I'm attracted to cynical, stuck-up, blonde prep girls, so, you know, I think we have different tastes in women, so I'm the wrong person to really ask for that. Oh, sorry. So, Mike, where do you see pregame lobby ending up when it's all said and done? Honestly, if I can be as cliched as possible about pregame lobby... Um, I, I imagine pregame lobby as a roller coaster ride. There are definitely going to be parts that people do not like, and they're probably going to hate it. And that, those parts have come up, um, and I expect them to come up again and again, and they're going to appeal to a smaller crowd, and you know some people will like it and some people won't. Um, there are going to be parts that people are going to love. I mean, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people are going to love these certain parts. Um, but in the end, when everything's done, when it's all said and over, um, I hope that everyone looks back at the series and they say, wow, you know, everything about that, that was all worth it. That, I really enjoyed being a part of that entire series, you know, for however long it runs. I, I can't say how many episodes it's going to run for. You know, I can't say if it's going to have another season or not. You know, I, I'd like to, but uh, I don't want to make any promises. Um, I have an idea of how long and what story arcs and what storylines and how far I want to go with certain ideas. But it's still being worked and reworked and still being decided. So, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, you guys will enjoy everything once it's all done. And uh, that's how I imagine, you know, everything as it ends, as it ends, um, that people will just enjoy it. And, you know, they'll look back on it 